okay, you guys, Miss Cheryl. Like I know you. I know. I know a lot about you. I know about your kids, the life. Please inform the PSA watchers and listeners of everything that you do. Well, I've been an instructor for 21 years now, and I do stay board. We do hair shows. We do fundraising. We do counseling. We do uh, all kinds of trips. Uh, I'm going to raise my hand. Counseling? Counseling? <laughs> counseling? Yes, I've counseled you several times. Several times. Several times. Several, yeah. several. You sure, yeah. Miss Cheryl? Yeah. Did it work? Yes. A little you bit. You are awesome. Yes. It worked just a little bit, yes, but did. I was a piece of work. Yes, she was. Y'all, yeah. Miss Cheryl, I did not like her. My first speaker school, PSA Watchers. I'm going to say that now. I love her now, but ooh, she said, oh, I want the feisty one. Put her ass on the floor. I said, jeez. <laughs> but that taught me how to shut up and just do what I had to do. I learned a lot. On that floor, but go ahead and not uh, more in the floor. There's no more. Okay. <laughs> yes, but um, I thank you for having me on your show. I'm really proud of you, G. I saw seeing you come from crazy. just crazy to this icon stylist, your own show, you know, all kinds of stylists watch you and get inspiration from you, and the students get motivation. You come out, you still teach classes, you give back. And uh, I appreciate all that. See, people don't know I do that. But thank you. Yes. They, they don't know. Y'all, and I yes. didn't pay her to say that. Thank yes. you. Yes. <laughs> this was not a commercial. No shameless pleasure. So, Miss Cheryl, I know that for a fact, like you said, you've been an instructor for 21 years, but you've been a stylist for almost 30. Almost 35. Goodness. So, I'm 36. That's one year oh. short of my, my lifespan. I know, right? So, by you being around such, you know, now I think it's a younger class of students that's coming in. Are they more motivated than your past classes or are they less motivated? I think now we see a lot of students that just think hair is fun and it's actually a lot of work, blood, sweat, and tears. And a lot of young people now don't have that motivation, that hustle, that drive. You know, they'll do a client, sit down, oh, I had a client already, you know, I'm tired. But the thing about it is if you don't keep going and you don't grind and you don't understand the craft and learn mm -hmm. how to do it and respect it, you know, you never get to where you're trying to go like mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. and still Child. going. Y'all, I got put out of head academy. You just got suspended. Well, suspended. Yeah. Then Miss Cheryl, thank you, Jesus, talked to Miss Laura. So the day I came back, we, we was getting ready to go to a hair show in Philly, I swear to goodness. And that's why I love hair. At any given point, I just want to do hair. That's it. I don't, you know, like I tell people, money will come for me. I just want to do hair. But Miss Cheryl had, you guys, a large clientele before she even became an instructor. So for her to transition over from one thing, because, you know, we love to stand behind our chairs and get that money. That might look good when you first start now. You get you get a great clientele. What made you just say, let me just slack off on this part of it and start on this part? Because it's like you're giving back. Well, the transition was kind of slow. Um, I started out still doing hair part-time, but it started to be a lot. But I figured out that the students needed me more than I needed to be behind the chair. Mm -hmm. And when I first started working, a client told me, you know, you know, Miss Cheryl, when you're somewhere where the most souls need to be saved, you're in the right place. I knew then I was going to be in Hair Academy for a while. Church message. Because, you know, women come to you from all different backgrounds. They, they have all different stories. Um, and then they, they get new stories once they in transition of becoming a kitchen beautician or I call them jailhouse barbers. They, their story changes. You know, they become, their self-esteem rises. Um, they start to respect themselves a little bit. Their appearance even change. I've seen girls, really I have. I've seen them come from rags to riches in a matter of nine months to a year just getting educated on how to better themselves and take better care of their skin, their hair, and presentation-wise. But then you have those non-success stories do do that do it hurt you to know that the, the the student that has the most potential isn't acting on that potential yeah you see a lot of students that'll back away from the industry 
but they always return. And it might be 15 years later, you'll see them come back and they'll still see me and be excited to actually start over and try to get the craft going. There's a student over here, her name Nutbush. Um, she, that will be me. They come back. They always come back me. to what they love. I started here, Katie, we won. So I would say this, and I, I just had a conversation with Miss Cheryl just recently, you guys. Miss Cheryl, when you think of New Curls and Hair Academy, you think of Miss Cheryl. I don't, nobody affiliates or associates any other instructor with that school. Some people think she owned it. That's how much she's been at the school. She's been there for a very long time. I have aunts that's like, yeah, okay, you know, this and that. Um, she's ran past a lot of different instructors also. Um, it, it, it's just crazy on how that happens because I know the instructors I had, like Miss Donna, Miss Crystal, Miss Palmyra, they were some serious instructors for me. Like between Miss Cheryl and Miss Crystal, I say they was battling out with me. You know, I'm that person that I don't want to be here, but you're the way it's gonna be on that floor. And then it's like you have Miss Miss um, Donna. She would yell at you. She'd be on the floor and say, "Y'all in the wrong place if you can't take eight or more clients on this floor. If you out there taking breaks, cigarette breaks, you're in the wrong." I mean. She would yell this on the floor to get y'all focused to let you know that this is the wrong time. As soon as you go to Miss Cheryl's classroom, it's state board, and it's like, dang, I made it, you know. But now that I'm out in the, in, the, in the hair cosmetology world, just like you have new students that's about to come out, what would be the, the most important thing that you install in them before or instill in them before they even come out? Most of all, I try to teach them how to remain professional. And some of the other staff, we work really hard with instilling how they look, how they dress. You know, a lot of that counts first, how they go on job interviews, how they speak to other people. Um, you know, it's, it's very hard for them to step out in the industry. So we tell them, we take them on field trips to let them see some shops and speak to owners and stuff like that. We do some, um, you know, sometimes we'll have some open houses. We'll go to the, some of the shops to get them more comfortable. But my advice is to stay focused, be on time. You know, make sure you're motivated. Be prepared, you know. And that's about it. So, Miss Cheryl, because um, you're, you're in all different parts of the school. You're here some days, you're there some days. If it's an instructor that's missing, you're, you're going to take over, try to help them in that particular department. I just think that Mr. Geminem should just get the school to you. <laughs> I do. I, I really do. No, she's she's there. She can tell you everything about financial aid, how to stay in school. When she's there, she's the educator. She's the administrator. She's she represents the school well. You know, she even helped the younger instructors come in to get a, a hang of what they need to do. She she should she should be ready to retire though. She should be, but. On well, that head, Miss Cheryl is not retiring, you guys. She's coming back for a throttle because y'all have a hair show, an annual hair show that just blows me away because last year, you know, shout out to New Curls and Hair Academy. Last year, I was there, and I actually got to teach. But Miss Cheryl called me. She was like, gee, yes, ma'am. So then she called me. I'm like, all right, I'm there. I could be dead tired. One eye open, I'm there. So inform us about the annual hair show that y'all have against y'all sister in school. Well, we have a hair show. This is our 11th annual show. It's actually next Sunday, April 2nd. It's at the Francis Scott P. Holiday Inn Hotel. We um, come together with the other school, sister schools, which is Hair Academy 2, Montgomery Beauty School, Award Beauty School in Chambersburg, and we battle it out. And it's a lot of fun. You know, you get to see a lot of different styles from different parts of the state of Maryland and it's really really interesting and the show thing is just crazy you never know what the students gonna bring you never know what you're gonna see you know and it's always exciting Miss Cheryl when I went you guys I'm walking in and I'm thinking it's just gonna be a student little show with the mannequins and you know this is me I'm thinking they doing mannequins y'all I, I walked into Bronner Brothers I mean don't sleep on them um schools where all the white kids go please don't because they watch it Bronner Brothers they watching us when I say they were more detailed, intric intricate into the hair stuff than we were. 
And oh, they they was doing Michael Jackson. They was doing the Thriller, the Matrix. They were really giving a show because I think they watched Dirk J <laughs> with the band and stuff. They was bringing it, you know. But it was like I was total awe because I was like, these are students and they're so in love with what they do. Like their future is bright to me. And then it's like I'm in there. And I, I fit right in because I, I look like a kid and I'm running around and I'm trying to tell them, you know, because I was teaching D mm -hmm. at Hair Academy and I'm telling her, oh, don't sleep now. You you want the work, but you got to work to get it. You know, Absolutely. all your ideas got to come out right now. I'm not here to do your work. I'm here to help you build a platform and, and let's keep it moving. I'm here to motivate you. So if you can't get this and make your dream come alive, it ain't no use for you being here. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I tell them, as Michelle was like, oh, you're not the right person. She would walk out the door, close the door. Um, what in school right now, would you say that the, is it called My Lady textbook? Yes. Would you say that it's, it has more details on African-American hair than it does Caucasian hair now? Now it does. It has a lot of both, and it actually teaches with the right and the left hand. So that's hmm. kind of good because a lot of students are left-handed, and sometimes they feel slighted with the textbook portion, but it actually teaches the left hand as well. So with the say board test, you got, this, this is the part that freaks me out. They took off the finger waves. They took off all this stuff that I, 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 I cried about. <laughs> yeah, I cried. I cried about certain things. You know, then you know how they make you cut your guideline. You guys, I didn't have my shears, but thank God I had Miss Cheryl. I knew how to cut with a razor. You guys, I did my whole haircut with a razor. Because I learned. I wanted to stay after school and keep learning. So why are they taking off so much stuff and making this test so easy for them? Well, I think, I don't think it's easier. I think they just took off what they thought wasn't necessary. And it's so funny because finger waves have come back so strong and the students struggle so hard with it. Shout but, out to Baltimore because yeah, I still do yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. And they struggle so hard with it. And finger waves are very popular. But I think they tried to make it easier for the students. To not have to struggle so much because I struggle with finger waves as a boy too. I, years and years, I hated it. Give oh me God. some of that. What's that? That conditioner we use up there that's like kind of watered down and give me one of the mannequins. Oh, I'm whip whip because in Baltimore we use all kinds of stuff beeswax. You put it by the stove, melt it down, put that in that mannequin. Girl, I got a good soft wave. Last me for three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> with some pump it up.